Pedo. 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 The four little word of mix of pedo is the hottest ticket in dentistry right now, right? Where you can become a pediatric dentist, have fun with kids, but most importantly, help children and their families with oral health care. Stay tuned as we talk to a D4 that just got into pedo. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Dr. Darwin, a new dentist coach with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the New Dentist Podcast Show, where we talk about getting into dental school, surviving dental school, getting into residency, and then life as a new dentist. Guys, we uh, appreciate you continuing to share, comment, and, uh, and liking the videos that have been helping not only you, but your colleagues and other people all across the globe, all right? So continue... To do that, also, this episode of Ask Dr. Darwin is being brought to you by GetIntoDentalResidency.com. GetIntoDentalResidency.com, right here. The number one resource to help you match and get into your number one residency program this cycle. This cycle. So for more details, go down below and find out more as to how the resource can help you. So today we're talking about pedo again we got another one another one that has been successful and his journey in becoming a board certified pediatric dentist today we're joined with student dr marquis snipes who is going to share his journey into pedo he's going to talk about why pedo what he did to prepare for his application the number of schools and why the number of interviews how those interviews went and uh, also how he put together his rank list for programs. And then he's going to share with us not only where he matched, where he's going to be going in July, but also he's going to be sharing with us some tips and advice. So guys, stay all the way through. Not through, but all the way through so that you guys have those tips and can use those tips to help you with your application. So student Dr. Marquise, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. How about yourself? I'm good. Probably not as good as you now that you are on your way to becoming a board certified pediatric dentist. Uh, so we applaud you and congratulations. Uh, please share uh, and introduce yourself. Share some information about who you are and where you're from for those that are meeting you for the first time. Absolutely. First and foremost, thanks for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, my name is Marquis Snipes, uh, born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina. I went to school at Pfeiffer University in North Carolina for two years where I swam. Uh, then I transferred to Clemson University where I graduated from in 2017. Um, I'm currently a D4 at the Medical University of South Carolina, and I'm just happy to be here. Swimmer, huh? Yes, sir. That's great. Well, you're going you get ready to swim into something <laughs> with all these pedo patients. Saliva. Keep my head above water. Yeah, saliva and 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 tantrums tantrums and, and teeth that want to bite, want to eat your fingers and everything. So <laughs> hopefully the, the things and lessons that you learned <laughs> becoming a swimmer will, uh, will help you. But uh, uh, so let's talk about, let's jump into it and talk about why pedo? Why did you decide to do pedo besides or surgery, general dentistry, uh, perio or endo? Why, why pedo? Yeah. So starting dental school, I sort of knew I wanted to specialize in something, you know, just didn't really know what I wanted to specialize in. Um, but PETA was always on the back of my mind um, because growing up, as I mentioned, I was a swimmer. Um, and for many of us, our first jobs as swimmers is uh, being a lifeguard or, or being a coach. Um, you're hanging out at the pool, you know, moms go run errands like, hey, can you watch the little Johnny for me for a while? So there I am, you know, inadvertently babysitting. Um, and I was fortunate enough after my freshman year of college to become um, a head coach of a swim team, um, kids from age about five to 18. Um, and at that time, I was realizing I was having to communicate, you know, a little bit differently with each age group, but ultimately to receive, you know, get the same outcome that I wanted from each age group. Um, throughout dental school, I sort of learned that that's just a form of behavior management. Um, and aside from that, um, just the energy, you know, the enthusiasm that it takes to work with kids, you know, you got to be quick. And efficient um, as you know kids have short attention spans um, 
And also you get to show your personality a little bit more and be a little more goofy in your day-to-day life and work. Um, and also the idea of just serving as a specialist for the pediatric population and performing a, a wide range of procedures such as anterior root canals, hopotomies, crowns, fillings, um, space maintenance, um, identifying pathologic lesions, doing limited ortho, you know, all the above. That, that kind of interests me a lot. And just watching a child being able to grow through each general experience is something that, you know, I want to be a part of and hopefully I can be of guidance to them someday. I heard quick, efficient, enthusiastic, energetic, all the things that not only that you, that require uh, for you to be an excellent swimmer <laughs> and your stroke and, and, and your le- level of energy, but all the things that you definitely need as a pediatric dentist. So uh, great story. Great story. So tell us a little bit about your application and how you, the process that you utilize to kind of help you prepare and put together your, uh, your application. Uh, well, like I mentioned earlier, I kind of knew I wanted to apply to some sort of residency, you know, going into dental school. So I knew I was going to have to put together an application or a resume of some sort. So what I did um, kind of kept note, a note tab on my phone and I kind of kept record of my involvement each year. Um, whether it be with leadership roles, community service, um, electives, you know, things of that nature, just to kind of keep track year in, year out, so that when it came time to formulate that CV, I can look back and be like, all right, you know, I did this this year and that year, you know, because sometimes you forget things because dental school is kind of, you know, like drinking water from a fire hydrant. It can be overwhelming. Oh, it definitely Um, is. There is no, ain't like, it is, (laughs) like you said. (laughs) It is. Absolutely. Um, and then here at MUSC, we have a Center for Career and Academic Excellence Center, um, which I use them to help formulate my CV and personal statement, which is a huge proponent of all applications. So um, having that center kind of help revise my personal statement and help me, you know, reformat my CV, to, you know, to bulk it up and put the important things at the top, you know, and kind of dwindle down throughout the CV really helped a lot. Um, and just having multiple people read over my personal statement over and over just to get different ideas and opinions really, really went a long way. Yeah, that's very helpful. And for those of you that are watching and listen, just keep in mind, if you go to uh, get into dentalresidency.com, uh, that's one of the services that we do provide uh, in helping you kind of put together your CV, maybe look, have another set of eyes um, on the document. Same thing with your personal statement, because those two things are very important for you to get to the next step, which is, getting to the interviews uh completely so so make sure that you have a process and have a network of people that are that can help you with the cv personal statement etc so you also as part of the application have to go through screening and come in procuring your list of schools uh, and figuring out why you're looking at certain schools or programs. So let's talk about that process and how you approach that as well. Uh, yeah, so I applied to about like 13 schools total. Um, and the reason being was that um, I wanted to increase my chances of getting interviews. Um, and I wasn't able to like, you know, go out to these schools for externships and things like that and get a better feel because of, of COVID. Um, so knowing that I had to kind of, you know, broaden my cast or, you know, widen my net a little bit to kind of reach for things that were out there that I, you know, I might not even know was for me. Um, and just just trying to trying to figure out which program would be best for me as far as hospital based or academic based. And I didn't know which ones I wanted. So I just tried to reach out to them all and just hope for the best. Yeah. And, and for some of you that are going through this process you know there is there is a difference uh especially the hospital-based programs typically they will have a pgy1 stipend uh, at some of those programs versus sometimes some of the school programs even though they have a stipend but they also have a <laughs> also have a tuition <laughs> that you have to pay uh yeah. so that can be another item that you have to evaluate is and, and determine whether or not that is something that you're willing to do or, you know, based on the program uh, as well. So 13 mm-hmm. schools, um, 
usually if you do the math, if say about 90%, 80%, maybe uh, of folks would love to be able to get that high percentage and uh, as far as the number of interviews that they got, which would be about 10 for, for based on the number of schools that you apply to. But share with us a little bit about the interview day, uh, the number of interviews that you got, any unusual questions about the interview? How do you prepared for the interview? Yeah. Um, so by the grace of God, I received nine interviews. Um, didn't expect that going in. Really was looking to get like about four or five, which is I uh, hear is a good number to get to increase your chances of matching. Um, to prepare for those interviews, um, I just kind of look things up online because, you know, you're going to get the generic questions, you know, tell me about yourself, why PEDS, why this program, why should we rank you high? Um, so just having a, a good response for those is always helpful, but not sounding too rehearsed. Um, and talking to the staff and the, the attendings at my school here to sort of, you know, figure out what type of questions I should be, you know, preparing for that I'm not even thinking of. Um, and as far as unusual questions, um, you got asked about, you know, favorite cartoons, Disney characters. I also had to dance in two of my interviews, which is unusual for any other specialty other than PEDS. So I kind of looked at it as, as normal. Um, but for the most part, all the interview questions were very conversational, like just kind of getting to know you because once you reach that point, they, they like what they see on paper. They just want to know if the personality fits what they're reading and what they've read about you in your personal statement and your letters of recommendation. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And you bring up a good point, which I've continued to hear about the interview day, especially specifically for Pedo, which is potentially doing stuff that you didn't think you would be doing, but because you want to be a pediatric dentist, they want you to, they want to see if you're in that, 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 that mind, that mindset, that frame of mind, right? Okay. Uh, cartoon characters got to be like, you have to know the top five cartoons that are out right now. Why? Because the kids that you're going to be working with are watching those cartoons. Uh, certain dances, depending on the age, you know, some of the kids are doing certain dances do, uh, that are related to the cartoons that they're watching, right? So they will, you know, uh, the actual program directors want to see if, if you have the ability to get the attention of the, of the, of the kids, which means now you could potentially, now you've connected with them, right? Yep. And now you could potentially get some work done in their mouth. <laughs> so uh, it, it may seem strange for other, other types of disciplines, but very, uh, very much in tune with what to expect for, for pedo interviews and, and a, a typical fun, enthusiastic day uh, in the, uh, in the pedo department as well. So, okay. So you had your interviews. Now you've got to go back take your notes and kind of come up with a, an order, right? Or, or what we call a, a rank list so that you can have a better idea as to why certain programs after the interview, right? It's two, that's the second ty type of uh, evaluation that you have to do. First, your, your full list of programs that you're going to apply to. And then based on that, your second list is, all right, I got these interviews. I met with the people because remember this process is for you too, right? You have to select places to go based on what's best for you. So yeah, they're interviewing you, but you are also interviewing them. So that second list is determined based on the feedback that you got for the interview day, the feedback uh, from the questions that you may have asked uh, and just the total vibe of uh, the day from your interview. So share with us a little bit about how you came up with your, your rank list uh, for the programs and the reasons why you kind of put certain programs uh, and, and, and the order that you did. Oh yeah. Well, you brought up all the good points right there. I mean, <laughs> taking, taking notes on interview day, I mean, that's that's a must because 
you know, having four or five interviews is, you know, you can easily forget. So having nine plus, you can forget what happened on what interview. And they kind of all merge together once you start formulating that rank list at the end. So taking your notes, you know, getting the overall vibe, you know, does the program offer a master's program? Is the program two year or three years? Um, does the program pay you? Uh, the on-call schedule, classes, uh, their board's pass rate, all of those things factor into ranking the program. Um, and for me, I knew that any of the schools that I attended <clears throat> that I interviewed at were accredited. So at the end of the day, I would come out a pediatric dentist. Um, but what was most important for me was whether or not I connected or felt like I would vibe well with the attendings that were there, uh, the co-residents that were there, you know, because that, that's that's a big part. You're stuck with someone for two years. It's like being in a mini relationship, um, being in that resident room every day with the attendings and your co-residents. You, you must get along with those people. Um, but for me, it was just, you know, I wanted to push my limits and I wanted a program that would better prepare me for what's to come after completion of the residency. Um, and, and the program that I matched at provides all of that. That's great, man. And now it's time for the reveal. Where's my, where's the music? Where's the music? Where's, where's my audio out. people today? Oh, there it is. There it is. Here we go. Let's go. Drum roll, drum roll, music, music. Ba -ba -ba -da. So where will you be taking your pediatric aspirations to in July? I will be taking my talent to Washington, D.C. I will be attending the Children's National uh, Hospital Re Pediatric Residency Program. D.C., Children's National Hospital. Congratulations, man. That's great. Thank That's you. Thank great. you. I appreciate that. D.C., all right, a uh, little bit different than South Carolina. A lot different. You a said you wanted different. a challenge. You want something different. Oh yeah, so I wanted all of it. Yep, that's good. That's good. There's some good folks doing some great things in Pedo. <clears throat> I have a couple of classmates that have offices uh, in uh, D.C. and the surrounding mm -hmm. uh, D.M.V. And since you're going to be in that area, you need to know what D.M.V. stands for, which is D.C. Maryland and Virginia. So if you yeah. didn't know, now you know. But that's what people fondly, uh, fondly call the area, the DMV area. So a lot of uh, classmates, some good people that I definitely will connect you to that are pediatric dentists uh, in that area. One is, uh, I think she may even be an attending. You might have met her at Children's Program, Dr. Amici. Yep. Darnell I Amici. I think that's how her last name is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so shout out to her, but also shout out to you to, so you can make that direct uh, one of one of many direct connections and networking in the area, uh, even while you're there as a resident. It doesn't you don't have to wait until you get ready to leave if you want to stay in D.C. to make those connections. I would definitely make uh, those connections now. So uh, which leads me to another tip or another uh, a, a thing of uh, uh, on the topic of advice. Knowing what you know now through your experience, and if you were to share this and also give advice to a D3 that's thinking and getting ready to prepare their application in the spring for the next cycle, what, 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 what's, give us three pearls of advice that you would uh, pass on to future uh, applicants. Uh -huh. uh, I would say get as much exposure to the specialty as you can. Um, whether that be at your current school or in a private practice setting, just so like that you're sure that that's the specialty for you and that's what you want to do. Um, another big one is asking someone that has seen you grow throughout dental school for your letters of recommendation. Um, that speaks volume to the, uh, to the people reading your application as they haven't met you. They only you know, know what they see on paper. Um, so having someone that can vouch for you and actually speak on your behalf in a positive way uh, definitely goes a long way as that was brought up multiple times um, in my interviews. So that'd be a, a big piece of advice. Um, and also, once you get interviews, just just be yourself. Um, they already like what they see on paper. They just want to make sure that you're fit in the description of what, what they're reading. Um, and that's about all the advice that I have. Well, that's some good advice. Uh, be yourself. Make sure the letters of recommendation is from someone that and seeing you grow and get the, expose, get the exposure now, right? 
not right. now, but right now. Get that exposure to see if pedo uh, is is a profession, is the is the discipline within the profession that you want to explore. Meet as many pediatric dentists residents as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is the discipline that you're going to be contributing to for the rest of your career. So very important that you do that due diligence and research, right? Absolutely. Well, researching and listening to your journey uh, and listening to the research that you've done as part of your journey has been very helpful, man. What's the what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? If they have uh, other questions as well. Uh, they can follow me on Instagram at Marquis Snipes. Um, just my full name. And that's about it. Check that out right there, guys. Marquis Snipes. Check out and tap into student doctor uh, Snipes, who's getting ready to be Dr. Snipes uh, oh, yeah. in the next couple of months. How many, how many days? What's the countdown? I'm not sure the days, but I think it's two and a half months. What? You don't know the days? Man. Hey. You better get that countdown together. <laughs> I got boards coming up next Friday. Oh, my last clinical one, well, so that's all I can think about right now. But after that, yeah, I'll you get a pass. Out the countdown. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you definitely get a pass because boards is uh, you got to do your boards before you get graduate. So, exactly, I get it. I get it. Well, after your boards come and after graduation, we want to stay uh, tapped into you and locked in with you and and follow your journey through pedo, so we can do a part two about how the first first year or how your pedo residency went because that's important for candidates to understand as well especially as they're selecting programs so all of this information today man has been very very helpful uh for those of you taking notes watching and listening go back go back but also drop down in the comments down below uh the one or two things that you liked most about today's episode put those comments down below and we appreciate it but also check out these next set of videos right here hopefully these will help you as well and that's our time love peace and smiles we'll see you guys next week join me next week we'll see you thanks doc thank you